Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today is my February recap of what's going on in the garden and I'm going to be talking about what my goals are for March. So I've been wanting to do recap videos for a while because this is something that I do for myself um, each month so that I can kind of come to the end of the month, kind of look back at what I did, my accomplishments, successes, failures, things I wish I'd gotten done. And then that helps me for my planning for the next month for gardening. And I typically do this on my own, but I thought maybe that's something that I should share on video, kind of showing you like where my mind is. I get a lot of questions of like, where are you going to plant plant that what's your plan for this how did you decide how to do this a lot of my decisions are made during my monthly recap when i sit down typically it's with my journal i sit down and i write out things that i'm happy with that i'm not happy with and then i make plans for the next month in the past years ago i used to just wing it with my garden and now i've gotten enough under my belt that i have an understanding of more of what needs to be done when and how important at least some level of planning can be for your garden. Because when you take the time to plan out something for your garden, I find that you use your time more effectively. It's more cost effective, um, less waste of products that are in the wrong place or we shouldn't have done this or whatever. I also feel like it really helps build my confidence in the garden. So it really highlights my successes and shows me what I have accomplished because even though I work in my garden all the time, sometimes I get to the point where I'm like, nothing's happening. I haven't done anything. I feel down about my garden, which is definitely not one of the goals for gardening. I garden because it brings me so much joy, so much peace um, in my crazy world. And so I really, it's really important to kind of look back and note what you did well, what you could have worked on, and what you're looking for to the future each month. So I actually keep um, like quarterly goals or monthly goals for each month. I have it broken down like the first three months, the second three months, the third three months, and fall, fall, the final three months. And um, that works seasonally for me as well. And typically I don't get super specific. I just put a handful of goals that I know that I would like to accomplish that particular month. It helps me with a lot, variety of different things, time planning, um, the amount of time that I have, budget, um, that really helps me if I have a big goal, like a, a costly goal for a month, then I know that I need to lay off on other things to fit within my budget. Um, it also helps weather-wise, you know, reviewing like, hey, I really wanted to do this this month, but you know, truthfully towards the end of whatever month that it is, it's going to be really hot. So it's really better if I accomplish it at that point. So I do do, you know, some planning for each individual month, kind of lay it out, just some bullet goals of what I want to do. And I keep those bullet goals um, in my planner. I have a video coming out um, in a week or so on um, more about my planner. My planner is a happy planner and I go in and I kind of just modified it for myself, but here's the quarterly garden gardening plan. And I don't get super specific, just a few bullets to kind of help me keep, keep me on track. There's a lot more that I do more than just these bullets, but these are the main things that I'm looking forward to. And so this kind of helps having it written down instead of in my head, because I found that as the older I get, the harder it is to remember all these things and to stay on track. So a certain amount of planning really helps me out in the garden. And I think that's important for every gardener, even just a casual gardener, um, you know, going through, making sure you're writing things down and that you are, you know, noting your achievements, I think is super important, really helps motivate you to the next step. But what I want to do first is um, for these videos, I'm going to start doing these at the end of the month. I'm going to recap February and then I'm going to talk about what my goals are for March and videos you'll be seeing in March. And I thought this might be a better way for those of you who have started um, seeding along with me, planting along with me, gardening with me. I thought if I gave you a more of a viewpoint of the month to come, that that would actually help with your planning as well. Okay, so for February garden, it was a good month for February. I think that this is the most productive I've ever been in my February garden, and I'm really proud of that. I think a lot of that actually had to do though with warm weather. We had unseasonably warm weather 
and that really put me outside quite a bit more than I typically would be at this time of the year. Okay, I wanna to touch base on the three most popular videos for the month of February. Um, just a little bit about them and what was happening. The first one was the You Won't Believe How Much I Paid video, and that is a video of me going to that um, rental warehouse where they were liquidating a bunch of their um, old rentals, which included a lot of garden stuff. I went with Kristen. We both purchased quite a few things. I got those tall metal urns, which I'm so excited to get installed in the garden. This is definitely the time where I am shopping a lot on Facebook Marketplace for garden finds. Um, I will say that these first three months of the year are by far the most popular for people putting their garden stuff up for sale. The reason I think that is happening is because they're currently not in use, right? So they're just hanging around people's backyards because they haven't planted anything because it's winter. But then people are also in that like clean it up, you know, organizing kick where they're getting rid of a bunch of stuff and they want less clutter and junk because it's a brand new year. So this is an excellent time to be shopping on Facebook Marketplace. So definitely make sure you did that. That's how I found this particular warehouse sale. And apparently several of y'all went over there. <laughs> I The guy actually asked me, I need to go back and I need to take off his information he's like we're good I don't need any more people to come he's like that was wonderful so I need to take the information off the video but um, yeah it was such a fun video very unique um, kind of situation I doubt I ever find something like that again in my lifetime um, but super fun to go shopping for all these garden process products at such a great price okay the number two most popular video was the Costco Costco uh, spring bulb shopping. So these Costco put out all of their spring planted bulbs. So you plant them now and they bloom in the summer. And that was really fun. I had been waiting. I felt like my Costco was a couple of weeks behind everybody else in the area. And I'd been waiting quite a while for those to come out. So that was really fun going through their selection. I do think that Costco ended up having the best quality for the best price, um, considering all the places that I went shopping for bulbs. And I did go shopping at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, and Costco. So five different locations for bulbs. And I'm very happy with their selection. I have a whole bunch that need to be planted up. So I do have upcoming videos on lilies. We'll be planting those outside, liatris, um, elephant ears, and gladiolas. So a whole bunch of separate bulb, spring planted bulb videos coming up in the next month. And then the last top video, number three, was a spring planted bulbs at Walmart. You guys love the shopping. Uh, lots of people love to see that. And that, that works great because I love to shop. So that's perfect for me. Um, you guys love the shopping videos. You love seeing what's going on in my store. I do get some comments of like, hey, or I'll get a comment. I've been like, oh, well, other YouTube gardeners are shopping at Walmart too. And I'm like, yeah, I bet they are. Well, I think one of the important things to remember is that everybody has a different viewpoint when they're going shopping at these places. And while I'm a, I watch shopping videos all the time for gardening and I love watching, most of them aren't in my zone in North Texas. So their inventory is completely different than what I am seeing here. And I think that is probably the most fascinating part of watching other people's. So when I get comments I'm like, of that, I'm like, really? There's somebody else from Wiley, Texas shopping in zone eight, you know, at Walmart for these plants? Who are they? Because I want to see. I think uh, all of these YouTube videos that are shopping at all these places, they all have different perspectives and they're all in different locations. So it's really fun to watch all of them. I consider them, consider them all very different from one another. So we do have still shopping more to go. We are done shopping for spring planted bulbs. Now we are shifting over to um, what the new spring inventory at nurseries. So there's a lot of that coming up in the month of March. So if you're into the shopping videos, there's definitely more to come. And then I did want to point out my favorite video for the month of February. Quite frequently, I find that I'll create a video and I love it. And I've just, I love the editing and I love the content. I enjoyed making it. And it almost always is not a super successful video. It just shows that, you know, we all like different things. But I did want to point out my favorite video that I did this month, which was five perennial cut flowers that I love. 
And I think the reason I really wanted to do this with the perennial cut flowers is there's a lot of focus on annual cut flowers in on my particular YouTube channel. I start a lot of those from seed. I um, do a lot of bulbs. I do a lot of those things that are all annuals and they're not going to come back year after year. So I really wanted to take the time to point out some perennial flowers that I love for cut flowers so that those of you who do want to be more budget conscious, you don't want to buy your annuals every single year, you can invest in these perennials and enjoy them for years to come. So that's a really fun video to check out if you're interested. All four of those videos that I just went over are going to be linked in my video description below. Okay, since I did not do a monthly recap at the end of January, so you actually don't even know what my February goals were. So let me talk about my February goals real quick and we'll talk more about did I achieve them or not. One of the big goals was seed starting. I definitely achieved that. <laughs> it went really well. I had lots and lots of success with seed starting. Definitely had some failures, but definitely more success than failures this year, which is great. I feel like I'm learning more, which is very helpful. I'm also learning a little bit more patience instead of trying to start all of my seeds at the same time. I've been trying to start a few varieties each week and just kind of build off of that. I think that was very helpful for me as well. Um, I also feel like my gardening journal was just so helpful with my seed starting because I never just grabbed a packet and just started sowing the seeds right away. I really took the time to research each of the varieties, think about it for myself, make decisions that made sense for myself and my garden regarding each of those seeds and taking that time to do that really really helped and I got a lot of great feedback from all my seed starting videos showing you all of that process and you all were really grateful for the information as well so I was really happy with that goal for February regarding my seed starting now the next goal was to get all of my bare roots started and I'm almost there I still have some like I have a sweet shrub over here that is a shrub I'm starting from um, bare root as well. I picked this up at Tractor Supply. Got a few more bare roots that need to be taken care of, but pretty much all of them are ready to go. I was just looking at placing an order for tall garden flocks from Longfield Garden. So I think I'm going to do that. And then that will be my last round of bare roots. So been really successful with the bare roots. I have lots of them growing. I'm looking right now. I've got bleeding hearts popping up like crazy and still be still don't see anything going on from my begonias um or um my begonias or caladiums yet but those do take a little bit more time to come out of dormancy another big goal for february was shopping facebook marketplace because i know that the beginning of the year is a time where the marketplace is flooded with garden finds and um this is a time of the year where i'm specifically i'm looking for pots um, all kinds of pots and containers uh, structure for the garden like old iron gates trellises unusual things that wouldn't typically be in a garden but work really well in a garden. Um, all of those finds are really important for me right now. I don't typically buy plants or seeds on Facebook Marketplace. I did want to point that out. It's not that you can't good, get good stuff and good deals. I'm just nervous. I don't want to take something from someone I don't know who grew something and bring it into my garden and it's infested with something or it brings disease. I'm just don't feel comfortable with that at this point. But for other garden finds, I find tons of stuff at this time of the year. So that was one of my big goals. And I definitely hit that, especially with that warehouse sale. And then touring nurseries. That was a really big thing I wanted to do. It's kind of the off season. So I have a little bit more time to get out and about. And even though nurseries don't have tons of spring plants out yet, it was very helpful to just go through the nursery, see some of the basic pricing, see what their plans were. A lot of them had their roses that were going to be on sale at a later point in time, or I was able to talk to the people who work there to hear about when they would get certain products in. I was able to check out their gift store or um, any of their gardening products, like all types of fertilizers and things along those lines. It really kind of gave me a little bit of the lay of the land at some of the nurseries that I would like to frequent more often. So I thought really good about my February goals, um, hitting those. Those were just my, some basic things. I did far more than that um, this month, which I'm really proud of. Got some more work done in the shade garden. Um, but yeah, it felt really, really good. I, I invested some more time in roses, which is wonderful, and got a lot of those planted up. Um, but yeah, I felt really good about what I accomplished in February. One, But let's talk about a couple of things that I didn't do that I had wanted to do. 
Um, one of the first ones is, so I have a lot of drainage issues in my backyard and I have a lot of grass and I have a lot of grass that I don't want. I don't want it anymore. The grass gets muddy and things like that. So one of my goals was to start laying down like some significant weed barrier and then topping it with mulch and creating some areas that are typically just mud and creating some areas where I don't have to worry about stepping in mud anymore. So that leads me into March. So that is one of my big goals for March to create these mulched areas that were former, they'll be formerly grass, now they'll be mulched. And I would like to be able to set up container gardens on those little areas. I think that would be really fun. And it leads me a lot into creating some destination focal points for my garden, which I think is something I touched on at the beginning of the year. I definitely need more focal points in my garden, more destinations and places to go to, to see the pretty stuff. Even in a small garden, you need things like that. And so I think that I can, this will help a couple of ways. It'll help with the drainage area. I would love to do rock. Um, rock is like eight times more expensive than the mulch. And I'm nervous about how hot that's going to feel in a backyard with full sun, you know, when we have 60 days of triple digit weather. So I don't know. I want the rock because I know that'll be better for drainage. But then on the other hand, I'm like, should I try mulch now? Try mulch first and see how that goes. And then maybe in a couple of years switch to rock. I don't know. I gotta think, I gotta think about it, but creating these areas for my container guard, more containers, more container gardening will be wonderful because I have invested in a bunch more beautiful containers and I would like to grow some different things in containers and they could be so fun. And the container gardening, that whole idea of the mulching and turning into container areas leads me to one of my other big goals for March. And that is to get the back porch cleaned off because the black porch is a hot mess right now. <laughs> And it, it is, I have all my terracotta pots up under the back porch because we had that really tough cold spell. And during that time, terracotta pots, if they're really wet and you get a really deep freeze, the water freezes and it expands and it can crack a lot of the terracotta pots. So I had to bring all those in. Well, I haven't brought them all back out yet. So um, I've been waiting to get the mulch done so then I could bring my containers out and then work from there. But I got to get that mulch done. It really has to happen in the next couple of weeks. And I don't think it's going to be super finished look. It's just going to be a start to an idea um, for this time. I'm not ready to like right this second go in and throw myself into building the like really intricate areas. I'm more focused on finishing up the shade garden first, um, but I do need to go ahead and create some basic patches to start off with for those containers so I can get them off the back porch. And then that also allows me to bring more seedlings outside for hardening. And it kind of just snowballs from there and allows me to do a lot of things in the garden. That's one of the reasons that I think planning really works for me. And I'm not talking about excessive step-by-step -step, step planning. I'm talking about a general planning because if I were to go out there right now and start shoving all my seedlings out there, and I've got some of them out there, but there's still a whole bunch in here. I would quickly find that, oh, well, I have to move this and I have to do this. And it, it's just not prepped and ready for me to do that. That's why sitting there planning, understanding the steps I need to go through in order to get to a final goal really is helpful for me each month. Now I touched on it a little bit. One of my other big goals for the month of March is to finish up the shade garden entrance. So if you recall last year, I built the shade garden entrance. So it's just, um, it's a wood entrance. It's a, what am I tra treated? It's treated lumber entrance with a vintage door. The treated lumber needed to cure for a minimum 60 to 90 days. And we are at that point now. So now it's the time for me to stain it, which I've really been looking forward to because the current color is unattractive and I'm going to stain it probably a dark Brown or a gray color. I haven't actually decided now I'm thinking more gray. It might be gray. <laughs> um, maybe a gray blue would be really pretty. I like gray blue colors. Um, but I'm going to stain that 
And then once that is stained, I've already trimmed back my America Climbing Rose. I'll be training that to grow up and over um, the structure. On the other side, I'll be able to plant, um, I have a honeysuckle that I had purchased back in late fall on clearance, be able to get that planted in. And there is a little garden space in front of the shade garden entrance. So I can fill that, I would like to fill it with perennials and kind of a wild cottage looking garden. And then that will soften the whole look of the entrance. I had somebody comment the other day on my um, shade garden video where I had installed the shade sale about how ugly they thought the front entrance was. And I, at first I was like, wow, I can't believe you wrote that like <laughs> on the internet. It's totally okay if you guys don't like things, but you don't have to write that it's ugly. <laughs> and she went on to say it needed to be stained. You need to have climbing roses on it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, if you had seen any other past videos or taken a moment to ask the questions, you would know that that actually is the plan. So um, I am looking forward to getting that wrapped up. There is some decor. There are some decorative elements that I'm going to be adding to it. Let me see. I love whimsical things. And one of the things I wanted to do is in the lattice openings, you know, so it has a lattice, but in the little square openings, I ordered a whole bunch of little glass crystals and I would like to suspend them in some of the square openings to cast just beautiful rainbow light across um, my uh, shade garden because the sun will shine through these and into the shade garden based on the sun's pattern. And I just think it would be really fun, really whimsical, fairy-like secret garden. I just, and I love sparkle. I love the idea of it. So that's one of the other big things I'll be doing is installing these. I think my mom is going to help me out. My mom loves jewelry. She collects gemstones and things like that. And she does a lot of like small handwork with jewelry. So I think she's going to help basically um, string these or wire these all up, which I'm really looking forward to. Totally weird, totally out of the box. I totally get that it's just going to be a me thing. Hopefully, hopefully nobody goes on and is like, oh, that's ugly. You know, if you don't like it, that's fine. Keep scrolling. No problem. But um, yeah, looking forward to adding those decorative elements and finishing up that shade garden um, entrance, especially so I can get things planted in front and around the shade garden entrance and soften the whole look. Okay, and then the last really big goal for March is transplanting seedlings. I have all the seedlings. I have hundreds and hundreds of seedlings that need to get transplanted out into the garden. My last estimated frost day is typically mid-March. It's like typically around March 15th. And um, I, what I'll do is once I get to March 15th, I'll kind of look at the two week um, spread, see how it's going. If it's looking fairly warm and like we're not gonna run into any freezes, I'm gonna be planting like crazy. So that's a lot of what you're gonna to see towards the end of March is me planting out the coleus and the begonias and planting up some spring containers and dianthus and like all these amazing, oh, all of the petunias, oh, those gotta get planted. <laughs> but getting all of these amazing plants that I've grown from seed out into the garden and I'm really excited about that because it shows the final product, right? you know you start planting and you buy this little packet of seeds for a few dollars right and then you plant them up and you watch them grow and you hope you don't kill them and they go through the hardening off process and then it's finally time to get them out of the garden it's months right it takes months to do that but you know one of the main reasons i started so much from seed this year was to save on costs typically i would go buy all my petunias at the nursery right and i would spend a couple of hundred dollars on petunias and that's just not as feasible for me anymore for a couple of reasons prices are higher secondly there are other things i want to work on other projects i want to work on such as like all these crystals i just bought right random weird thing that's not cheap but by growing a lot of my annuals from seed, that allows me to invest in projects like this. You know, so that's kind of the whole process and getting them finally out into the garden, into their containers is gonna be the moment, right? The moment I've been waiting for and working towards. So I'm really excited to really start getting the, a lot of those transplanted outside. Now, for the month of March, I typically do a March rundown. I have just a page that I come in and I mark it up for March. I put my goals in and then I make notes along the way, different things that I did on different days. I went ahead and marked off my kids' spring break, um, just things along those lines, my last frost date. 
And then if I end up being like, okay, I'm going to be transplanting coleus, you know, on these days, I'll write that in for reference for next year when I go back. And I also have a reflection, a monthly reflection right here, which is super helpful. It talks about what went well, what didn't go well, what I can improve on and what I need to prepare for for the next month. That's super helpful along the way because sometimes things happen in the first or second week of the month and I'm not going to remember them unless I write them down. And it gives me an opportunity to go back and review that. So I wanted to touch on this. I'm going to be doing this at the end of every month for you all. And then I'm hoping to follow it up with a garden tour right after. So like this would be my recap for February, my plans for March. And then the next video would be a tour, which should be the beginning, should be the beginning of March. So a tour of the garden at the beginning of the March. So that if you watch the videos back to back, it gives you reference, right? Of what I'm talking about and then actually seeing it in person for the tour. Um, that's kind of my hopeful goal. The overall goal of this entire kind of video series I'm putting on is to help you plan better. I'm trying to show you what's in my head, what's in my journal, so that you in turn can make that work for you, you know, adapt it for what your needs are. You definitely do not need to be doing everything I'm doing. You, I, we're not the same gardeners and we don't have the same space, right? You need to be doing what's best for you. However, it's really nice to be like, oh, Amanda was doing this this time. I want to do that too. I'm probably going to do it next week though. That works better for my schedule or my budget. It just kind of helps you know that, hey, we're planting, you know, seedling transplants, you know, at this time of the month instead of waiting till June, right? When it's way too hot or whatever. So I'm really hoping that this series is helpful for a lot of y'all. I would really love to know how you plan for your garden. Do you just wing it? Do you put stuff on your phone? Cause well, my phone is recording. I, I make notes on my phone because I'll be in the pickup line, you know, going to go pick up my 10 year old and I'll think of something and I'll type, type it on my phone real quick. Cause I'm definitely not going to remember in 30 minutes when I'm at home. Um, I do it that way. And then I, this, I have now started doing all the planning in my journal, which has been a game changer. I think the biggest help for the journal is going to be going back and referencing because I've dated everything along the way. So I'm, I can go back and I can reference my notes and see, oh, that's right. I started like, for example, the, the blue lace Didicus seeds that I started. I only got two. Where? Oh, it's over there. I only got two out of 10 that sprouted. When the time comes next year for me to plant it, um, to start it, I will be able to come back and reference and be like, Oh uh, yeah, maybe I should have direct sowed that outside for cool flowers as opposed to trying to start it inside um, as an inside flower. So these references in this writing, it gives me the opportunity to go back and review it because my memory is not great. I just, it's not that I have bad memory. I just have a busy life and I can't be the only one. I Y'all all have to be super busy people. <laughs> like, And I'm a person, I have a lot of things in my head at the same time. You probably notice like, my my college degree is in sculpture is in fine art and i love art but i definitely have an artist brain smashed with a mom of three smashed with a person who wants to be super organized but struggles with organization like i just have all of this kind of smashed into one and my head is constantly like you know trying to figure things out i lay in bed at night and i can't sleep and i plan gardens like <laughs> what I want to do. So this is super helpful because it's like taking what's in my brain and putting it here on paper for my reference in the future. Um, I also love how therapeutic it is just writing these things out. Um, a lot of y'all have commented your handwriting so pretty. You would die laughing. I need to find some of my journals in the past like because this is really we're only about a year and a half almost two years into journaling. Um, for my garden and the ones at the beginning when I started writing were so terrible because I never wrote I always typed or texted everything so I rarely used my hand and my hand like had to build up its muscles again to start writing so now it, it took a while now my handwriting is pretty and now I can write a whole page without having to stop whereas in the past I, my hand was too weak to be able to do that all right I hope you all have enjoyed this video I definitely rambled on some but that's also kind of what I want to do in this video. I want to allow like my brain to just process stuff and put things out there, ideas and thoughts, because hopefully it's going to, you know, sound a bell in your head regarding something that you want to do for yourself in your garden. That's the goal too. 
If you would also like, I would love it if you would drop one of your goals for February in your garden. Are you going to be transplanting? Do you want to go buy all the plants at the spring garden? Are you in a cooler zone? And this is finally your opportunity to start seed starting. You know, drop a comment below. Let us know what your plans are for March because I definitely want to hear about it. All right, you all. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it helps grow the channel. Give me a thumbs up and drop a comment below. If you don't want to write up a comment, put an emoji in there and that works really great. Somebody posted the little hat emoji the other day. It's like a little green bow and I love it. I've been using it on everything. And make sure you check me out on my social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's an ad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.